so is the dawn. Morning awakes creation's song, and with the rising sun, war comes alive to carry on. The light, the light is shining on. The dark, the night can overcome. The light, the light that burns so bright can take the wrong. Let strange arrow hit you. Every day people pray. They'll find the strength to make it through. While there is one who waits to fill their hearts with life and hope. Oh, you can die of thirst in the midst of water. If you don't know how to respond to your godly provided environment. Your body is not you. You are only carrying the body. If at this moment your body can tell you that you are tired and you listen to your body, your situation is miserable. Where are you going to get deliverance? You want to go to where they will tell you to hit grass? Come on, stand to your feet. None of you should be as tired as I should be. But I don't ask my body how it feels. I tell my body how it should feel. Amen. Body, you are strong. Amen. Come on, tell your body, you are strong, body. My bones, you are strong. My muscles, you are strong. My entire being, you are strong. I don't take orders from you, my body. I don't take orders. I tell you. Somebody there said that I have a bad leg. You don't have a bad leg until you agree that you have a bad leg. Yeah. Under this atmosphere, all things are possible. Amen. Can you raise up your right hand and say, under this atmosphere, under this atmosphere. all things are possible. All the bondages I came into this hall with, I will not leave this hall with them. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to yield to commandments that are contrary to God. Look at me for a moment. Hannah in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, he said, God is a God of knowledge by whom actions are weighed. God is a God of knowledge by whom actions are weighed. Don't forget that scripture. It always guides me in my life. It means that God is watching your action to decide what he will do next. You can enter the house of God and say, I'm tired. God says, to whom that is forward, I will be forward. You want to be tired? Okay, I'm tired too. Don't you know that God has emotions as well? If you show him an emotion of you are nothing, he will show you the emotion that you too, you are nothing. Over to you, Pastor. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want everybody here to pray. I want you to take this seriously. Father, put on me the robe of life. Replace that grave garment. If Satan puts the garment of the grave on you, you'll be dreaming of death. There's somebody here, you've been dreaming of dead people. I won't even bother to call you out because of time. But I want everybody to pray that prayer. The Lord, the garments of the grave, let it be destroyed now. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want everybody to declare, I will not die, but I will live to declare the goodness of God. I will not die. I will not die. I will not die. I will not die. My wife will not die. My children will not die. I command the great garments to be destroyed now. That's grave garments. That's grave garments. Let it catch fire now. Let it catch fire now. Let it catch fire now. That garment from the grave. I destroy you now. Mashikaba Sutabaya. Mabashikaba Sitibo. Mabashikaba Sitibo. Mabasatakaba. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to repeat this after me. Satan, you cannot threaten me with death. My life is not in your hands. My life is hid in Christ and in God. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can have your seats. You might not understand what we have done. But if God opens your spiritual eyes, you can see, you will see. And you might not know the importance, but this is not my subject, but I will explain to you in two minutes. You see, when Joseph, when he was cast in prison, and when the king finally called for him, do you know the first thing he did? He went to remove the prison garments. Because garments are important. <laughs> because he had understanding. He knew you don't approach the throne of a king with the prison garments. When Jesus called Lazarus out, do you know the first thing he did? He said, remove that garment from him. Because he had the garment of the grave. And he knew Lazarus' time was not now. He has not fulfilled his destiny and purpose yet. And if they did not remove that garment, the spirit of the grave will continue to pursue him. So you don't know, understand what we are doing. If they put a garment of failure on you, you will fail. It doesn't, it doesn't mean whether your father is Bill Gates, you will fail. I don't, think, I don't know whether you read papers. Do you know the, how many children of millionaires died in an hotel room, overdosed? Because they failed and they were ashamed. And Satan told them, the best thing you can do is die. Praise the Lord. And we just read about the wedding feast. And they said, anyone that is not wearing the right garment will be thrown out. My topic this morning is to speak about the lifestyle of Zion. We are talking about the ego Christian and the Zion lifestyle. Praise the Lord. Just let the Holy Spirit lead. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'll tell you seven things, important things about the ego, which you are likened unto. Amen. This is the camp of the eagles, yes? Pastor Togs, our father, by the special grace of God, has said we are eagles. And he has said we should shine forth. Amen? I'll show you who, what an eagle is. What kind of a board an eagle is. And what you have been endowed with that you don't know. Because the Bible already says you have the treasures in your earthen vessels. 
The ones we can give you, we will give you. But the one that is already there, we will activate it. The problem with most Christians is identity. In the church today, there's an identity crisis. They talk about people eating grass, people running up and down because they don't know whom they are. Some of the people that you are even running to, you should be praying for them. Because what you carry, they don't carry it. What they are just doing is an exchange program. They take what you have and give you what they have. You don't understand what I'm saying. In the Garden of Eden, Adam had the garment of glory. Satan knew the value of it. He used to have it. But when he saw it on Adam, he was jealous. And there's a principle in the Bible. To whom you choose to obey, the same is your master. He spoke to Eve. It was the word of Satan. Lucifer. Whatever you want to call him. Because Adam obeyed it. Because many people don't know how did Adam lose his power. How did he lose the dominion and authority? Because he obeyed. Because it is whom you obey. That is your master. So he obeyed. And he traded his dominion, his power, his glory. He gave it to Satan. And he took the failure Satan had. Because Satan was naked, he became naked. Some will receive blessings and grace. Then you go to somebody who is in disgrace. Somebody who has fallen out of grace is in disgrace. Praise the Lord. The number one quality, I'll give you seven qualities of an ego. The number one quality of an ego is altitude. Eagles fly higher than any other bird. I'm sure you've had it before, but you cannot relate it to your life. Oh, they say eagles fly very high. Yes. Some eagles fly as high as a plane. There have been occasions where an eagle have hit planes. But there are some unique things about eagles. They don't fly with sparrows. And they don't fly with chickens. Even chickens cannot fly. But today we see eagles among chickens. It is wrong. The eagle is the bird that can fly the highest. So everybody here, in anything you do, that should tell you that you should excel. God has already given you the ability to excel. The eagle does not need anybody to teach it how to fly high. God has built the eagle that way. Other birds wonder how the eagle can fly higher than them. It is because it is in the eagle. You are not here by accident and you are not here by mistake. It is a call of destiny. You are here so that what is in you can be awakened. You might have been sitting with failures. So you believe that you are a failure. Or maybe people have called you failures. Or even maybe your parents don't even expect anything good from you. But I tell you different today. When God sees you, he sees a champion. That man David that you speak about. Do you know that even his own father believed he was a failure? Because he had an elder brother who went to Harvard. Did his MBA in Cambridge. And did a PhD in Oxford. The other one too had three degrees. The other one too, they were all doing great. But David failed his O-levels three times. He could not pass his O-levels. And they saw a failure. But it is not finished until it's finished. Because the person that created David knew that when the scales are balanced, David will outshine them all. 
And the prophets came and they were coming one by one with all their degrees and qualities. And they were saying, no, not this one. When they are coming to your father's house to choose a king, your father sent you to the bush. Because even the father disqualified David. Where I come from, they say they have Oluomo. The parents look and say, this is the one that will be successful. You will be the greatest among my children. The father did not expect that David would be the one. Maybe in your family, they look at you and say, you are a failure. You can't make it. It's a lie of the devil. Eagles fly higher. And I speak into your life today. What nobody in your generations have accomplished, you will accomplish it. All you have to do is agree with me. You just have to accept that grace. You've, you've been hearing Pastor Tok saying, you'll be greater than me. Because you don't know whom he is. You, don't, you can't identify that grace. It takes a great person to identify another great person. It takes somebody who can see. I pray that God will open your eyes. Apostle Paul said, don't know people after the flesh. Know them after the spirit. I pray that God will open your eyes. There have been ministers of God here. <laughs> because you are blind. You don't even know whom they are. They will pass you in the camp. and you just, Some of you will almost push them down. When you are supposed to kneel down and say, sir, don't go. Just speak a word into my life. Ignorance, ignorance is a problem. One word can change your destiny and the destiny of your generations for good. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray. That before you leave this camp, the Lord will increase you in knowledge and understanding. That you understand the things of God. Praise the Lord. One of the lifestyles in Zion, let me jump further, is covenants. Amen. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because you are under this ministration, you don't know who the fathers of this assembly are. I don't think you know who Pastor Tunde Bakare is. You don't know whom Afolabi Oladele is. You don't even know whom Pastor Talks is. You don't know. And you don't know whom, whom I am. You don't know. But because you are under this ministration right now, I speak greatness into your life. Can somebody quickly help me open to First Chronicles? Pastor Tox was saying something. He said, where faith fails, covenant works. I will invoke a covenant upon your life now. First Chronicles, if that is the only thing we can do before the time is up, it will be worth it. First Chronicles 17, I believe. Mash. Praise the Lord. Are you there? First Chronicles seventeen. Amen. I want you to start from seven. Now, therefore, thus shall you see unto my servant David. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, and thou shalt rule over my people Israel. And I have been with thee wheresoever thou walked, and I have cut off all thine enemies from before thee, and I have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are on the earth. This is the covenant the Lord had with David. Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ is the root and offspring of David. Okay? 
Maybe some of you cannot relate yourself to Jesus. Say, I'm a child of God, you know, but you don't know. You see, in the lineage of Jesus, there was greatness. From Abraham down to Isaac to Jacob, there was greatness. And because you are a child of the Lord Jesus by adoption, greatness is in your veins now. I decree right now that your DNA begin to change. Your DNA, as I speak, your DNA is being changed now. You are taking the DNA of Jesus. You are taking the DNA of greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we are going to pray now. Can we stand up? Mm. I'm going to invoke this covenant upon your life. So thus shall you say unto David, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep. I don't know where God has picked you from. I don't care what your situation is this morning. The Lord is going to pick you up. And he's going to lift you up. Because eagles belong on the top. That is why he said, you are the head and not the tail. I speak greatness into your veins this morning. I speak greatness into your life this morning. In the realms of the spirit, your position is changing now. You cannot fail. You shall be a ruler. You will be the head and not the tail. In the mighty name of Jesus. The genes of failure that have been in your bones, it is replaced this morning. Let the blood of Jesus flow through you now. He said, I have been with thee wheresoever you have walked and have cut off thine enemies from before thee. I pray right now, every enemy of your greatness, every enemy of your destiny, Every power, every spirit that has stood against your advancement. I'm not the one that will destroy them. The Lord says, he will destroy them this morning. I want you to begin to pray with your own mouth. The Lord, take me. You are the one that knows your position. That position of failure, position of poverty, position of lack. Lord, take me from this position now. Take me up according to your word. Because you are not man that you can lie. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the child of Jesus Christ. I'm the child of God. I'm the child of Jesus. Therefore, there is greatness. There is greatness in my bones from today. I am great. In Jesus' name, we are still praying. Every power that has stood against my breakthrough, my advancement, my success, my moving higher, my moving further, my expanding to the right and to the left. Let those powers be destroyed now. Let those powers be cut short now. Every power that has stood against my business. <laughs> Mommy. Every power that has stood against your business, the Lord destroys them this morning. Every power that has stood against my ministry, they are destroyed this morning. Every power that has stood against my marriage, hear me, man. The Lord said, I should tell you, every power against your marriage is destroyed now. I break that yoke now. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you every power, Mashikaba Sotaba. Those arrows that have been shot into your marriage now, Mabashikaba City. I send them back to the camp of the enemy now, Mashikaba Sundaba. I speak peace and joy. Mashikaba Sintebo. Mabashikaba Sotoboyeba Santabaya. 
Mashike Bobosi Tabaya. Mommy. He said he has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. Mashika Basi Tabo. Time and season happening to them all. It is your time now. It is your season now. The glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. Mabashika basoto boye basataba. Mabashika basete bo. In Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name we pray. In Jesus mighty name. Can we have our seats? We are just starting. Mabashaka basete bo. Shisatabaya. Mm. Praise the Lord. We are talking about the ego now. The ego that you are. Amen. Eagles don't eat dead meat. Eagles don't eat dead meat. Well, some of you are still drinking milk. You will not drink stale milk. Say amen. amen. The meat is the word of God. And it should be fresh. It should be fresh from the throne of grace. And that is why the Bible says you yourself, you should study. You should study to show yourself approved of God. A, work, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Who can rightly divide the word of truth. And the Bible told us about the Bereans. They said anything they were told, they went back to confirm. The reason people are eating grass is because they are not going back to confirm. The Lord can never give anybody a revelation that contradicts his word. Because the Bible says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and that word is God. You might not know this Bible is the written word of God. The revealed word of God that comes from the spirit cannot contradict it. If somebody tells you, you need to go and buy a calabash and kill a chicken. Ask him, can you show me that here? And if he shows you that in the, even in the Old Testament, if you are somebody who has studied and has understanding, you will tell him, we are in a new dispensation. This is not the dispensation for that. This is the time of speak the word. Speaking things into existence. Mabashika basanda. The Bible says the expectation of all creation. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons of God are people who are walking, they have attained the position of sonship. They have attained dominion and authority. <laughs> everybody says, everybody claims, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. But until you go to the book of Revelation, you say, it is those that have overcome that are we allowed to sit with me. You are still struggling with your flesh. Then you have not overcome yet. Amen. I'm sorry. But when you have a headache, the first thing you think about is Panadol Extra. <laughs> you have not entered sonship yet. When you feel ill and the first thing you are thinking about is your doctor, you are joking. And we are all waiting for the Lord. We are waiting for rapture, right? Okay, praise the Lord. It takes more. It takes dominion. It takes sitting on that throne. It takes God. It takes a thirst and a hunger. It takes grace for God to take you to another level. I'm not saying it is wrong. Yes, Satan can afflict us. And I'm not saying it is wrong for you to take your tablets. Because the Bible says, you know, what faith does, we speak those things that are as if they are not. Is it? No. That's not what the Bible says. We speak the things that are not as if they are. The Bible did not tell you that you speak the things that are as if they are. No, it is the things that are not that you speak. 
So Satan, when somebody has a pencil, somebody has an eraser. This is not hearsay. I have seen somebody that the doctors declared they gave him a date, date to die. And they brought him to the church and we prayed. And we, I spoke to the spirit of cancer and I told it to dry up. And he dried. You can ask Pastor Elodie. He knows the person I'm talking about. And the GP said, you want them to strike out my name from the name of doctors in the United Kingdom? Because I diagnosed cancer. Now they have taken you for all tests and they can't find the cancer. Satan has the pencil. We have the eraser. That is the position of the sons of God. If Satan has declared you a failure, we declare you a champion. That is why our God makes a way where there is no way. The children of Israel, they said there is no way out. Behind is the enemy and the sea is in the front. But the Lord parted the ways. So right now, ways are being parted for you in the realms of the spirit now. So you don't have to eat dead meat. It is fresh revelation. What is God saying now? In the Bible, there is what they call the truth. And there is a present truth. At a point, Jesus, um, John the Baptist, he was the truth. He was the voice in the wilderness and he was speaking. And he was offering, offering people salvation. But one day, Jesus appeared on the throne, uh, on, the, on the scene. The minute the Lord Jesus appeared, he became the present truth. And the people who followed John the Baptist, they were in error. That is why you cannot hold on the things of the past. You need fresh revelation, fresh word from God. As an ego, I will leave that there. Eagles have strong vision and focus. The ego can be many kilometers high, but when he looks down and sees a prey, he doesn't lose his focus. He grabs that prey, comes down, grabs it, and moves. Many of you, your eyes are shifty. You don't have focus. You are easily distracted. From your academics, you are distracted. From different areas of your life, even in serving God, you are distracted. To be an eagle, you have to be focused. Eagle, an eagle is focused, determined, and it will achieve that which he wants to achieve. Because the ability to achieve is in the eagle. The eagle is not a bird that fails. Whatever he sets his heart to do, he does. So if you are here today, whatever the distraction is that has limited your life, I command that spirit of distraction to be changed now in the mighty name of Jesus. You are set free from that spirit of distraction now. From today, you will focus. And like the prophet of God, you will see the Lord seated on the throne. Your eyes will be focused on him from today. You will neither look to the right or not to the left. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see, as people have come into the camp, they want to be focused to serve God. Well, some, there are some distractions. I'll speak about that shortly because Pastor was talking about it yesterday. Because many of us, we don't know the consequences of what we're doing. And the enemy is using some people. Amen. They gave us some leaflets. I don't know how many people read it. And one of those leaflets spoke about the daughters of Moab. How many people read it? They gave out leaflets to people in the camp. Yesterday, how many people have read those leaflets? One of them has something about the daughters of Moab. If you have read it, can, you, can I see your hand? They were given to the ladies. If you have read it, can, you, can I see your hand up? Lord, have mercy. So none of you... Lord, have mercy. 
That is why I understand. The daughters of Moab were sent into the camp of Israel to cause the men of Israel to sin against God. They went with short skirts, clothes that showed their cleavage because the, the Amorites were destroyed. And Moab, they, they, they devised another strategy and they sent women into the camp. And as the men, as the men begin to sleep with them, God was angry and he began to destroy. Some of you don't know what you are doing, but when you are, you are coming into the presence of God, you are not going into a disco hall. We are talking about Babylonish garments. Those are garments of Babylon. You don't bring them here into Zion. Nobody is here to look at your body. And if you are here to entice men, I'm sorry, you don't belong here. You'll be cast out of the camp. Because you are wearing a garment of Babylon. The Lord Jesus, when he, 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 our mommy read in, in Matthew, when the Lord Jesus invited people to the supper, the people who had the wrong garments, he said, cast him out. And I say with the authority of Pastor Tokes, from today, if anybody is seen with the garment of Babylon in this place, you will be thrown out. And you can dare us and see. Because it means that the spirit of Moab is in you. That you have been sent here to infiltrate this camp. To make a holy ground unholy. The men that have come to be focused on God. It means you have come to distract them. And the men also. Don't think you are exonerated. There was a man in the Bible called Balaam. He was offered money by Balak, who I represent to be Satan now. So if you are here, you are not here to serve God. And you are sent here to deceive the women. Because Balak received the money. And when he tried to curse the children of Israel, and he could not curse them, he said, I know the trick to use. Send strange men and women into the camp. And when they begin to seduce them and sleep with them, God, their God will be angry with them and he will slay them by himself. So if you have been sent here, a young man, to seduce the women, the hand of the Lord will be upon you. And I say that with the authority of heaven. If you know you are not here to serve God, pack your bags now and leave. Because I speak with the authority of heaven. I have dominion and jurisdiction over this place. I'm not speaking of myself. If you have eyes, you will see who is standing here. That I am that I am. Him who have called me is standing here. The lion has roared. His word is a two-edged sword. The Lord heals. And the Lord slays. Yes, yes. Let everybody be warned. Yes. There must be holiness in the presence of God. Yes. May the Lord be glorified. We are not here to pray. We are not here to play. Okay? We are not here to play. If you want to play, please, the door is open. You are not held here. By force. Praise the Lord. The same God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the God of Ananias that dealt with Ananias and Sapphira. If your motives are wrong for coming here, I warn you again. The lion has roared. Be warned. Praise the Lord. If only the clothes you brought here are clothes of Babylon, borrow. What did I say? Borrow. borrow. 
Nobody's interested in seeing your body here. It is your spirit we are interested in here. What if your body is beautiful and your spirit stinks? Mashikaba Sunda Yaba. There's a lifestyle in Zion. The lifestyle in Zion is prayer. In Zion, you pray. You are not focused on any man. You are focused on the Lord himself. Don't come and look at Pastor Tox or any of the pastors here. Come and look at the Most High himself. I believe you set this time apart to focus on the Lord. I was telling them, I said, in our own days, you have camp. What is food? You fast. You want to receive from the Lord. You have with fasting and prayer. First Thessalonians 5.27 says, You pray without season. Amen. And Psalm 55 verse 16 says, Evening and morning and at no time will I pray. That is David. That is a lifestyle. That is our lifestyle in Zion. It's a lifestyle of prayer. Because you establish communication with the Lord. You have to establish communication with the Lord in Zion. Amen. Psalm 55 verse 16. David said, evening and morning and noon time will I pray. And in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10, he said, Daniel prayed three times a day, as he did before. So, Daniel prayed three times. How many times do you pray? Praise the Lord. To be a mature Christian, your prayer life must be alive. Your life, if your life depends on God, then you have to be in communication with your source. He is your source. You have to be connected to your source. The day a tree has been cut off from the branch, that day it becomes to decay. It begins to decay. So you cannot live a life of prayer because you are disconnected from the power source. And that is why the enemy afflicts people. Praise the Lord. The lifestyle of Zion is praise. You have to live a life of praise and worship. Because it is in the midst of the praise of his people that the Lord dwells. Amen? Amen. And that is why you have to remove the garment of mourning from yourself. And you have to put on the garment of praise. Because that is what attracts God to you. Praise the Lord. Because of time, I want you to write this scripture down. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Because you don't know what praise does. When you praise God, you are invoking the presence of God. And when you stand in the presence of God, anybody that is afflicting you, any power that is holding you is destroyed. Because in his presence, there is liberty. If you go to 2 Chronicles 20, 20, you will see where praise was used as a weapon. It says, believe in the prophets of God. Believe in God. Let's read it. The Lord is in his temple. Mashakaba Sundabaya. And they rose early in the morning and went forth to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And when he has consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that they should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army to say, Praise the Lord for his mercies endure it forever. And they began to sing and to praise the Lord. And the Lord, listen to that statement, and the Lord sent ambushment against 
the children of Ammon, and Moab, and Mansia, which come against Judah, and they were smitten. So when you praise the Lord, something happens. And that is the lifestyle in Zion. Praise the Lord. Amen. You might not know, but Zion is the abode of soldiers. Amen. In Zion, you have soldiers. Everybody in Zion is a priest, a prophet, a king, and a soldier. Amen. Can you open with me to the book of Joel chapter 2? Hmm. I was saying in Zion, you have soldiers and ambassadors of Christ. And I asked us to check the book of Joel chapter 2. And it says, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. And that is what we are telling you this morning. If you are in Zion, you have to tremble. You have to fear because the Lord is in his temple. I'll read from chapter um, verse 3. What kind of people are in Zion? What kind of soldiers? A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burned. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and of horsemen they shall run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble. As the strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall, much, shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men and they shall climb the wall like men of war. So in Zion are men of war, not weaklings, but men of war. Praise the Lord. So the lifestyle of Zion is a lifestyle of a soldier. Amen. And the Bible did tell us that you are soldiers of Christ. And soldiers can endure hardship. That's part of the training of a soldier. So all those uh, murmuring and uh, they have to stop. Because soldiers can endure hardship. If not, you cannot be a soldier of Christ. And that is why you see people going to eat grass. Because they cannot endure. They are looking for the shortest cut out. Part of the culture and lifestyle of Zion is that you must be patient. You must be able to wait for God. Wait for the salvation of God. The three Hebrew children. You know what they said? They said, oh, ye king, we know that our God is able to deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we would rather die than to look for any other solution. Can you say that today? That I would rather stand and wait for the salvation of God. I don't care if there are 25 TB Joshua's anywhere. Why are you looking for the shortcut? Why do you have to go and buy some oil somewhere? Even in London, they sell Ribena and they say it's the blood of Jesus. And people rush there to buy it. Say it's the blood of Jesus in, in, in a bottle. How can the blood of Jesus be in a bottle? They put Ribena in a bottle. And ignorant people go and buy it for 50 pounds. Say it's the blood of Jesus. That is why, as soldiers, you must be able to endure hardship and wait for the salvation of the Lord. 
And like the Hebrew children, say, look, I have prayed. And I know my God answers prayers. Instead of going to eat dead meat somewhere, I will wait for the salvation of the Lord. Amen? Amen? That is how it is done. And that is how you have to do it. Not looking for shortcuts. Not going to where you will buy anointing. God is not selling. So you should know what you are buying. You are buying something from the pits of hell. Because Jesus paid the price. So if somebody is now dishing out envelopes and say if you don't sow seed, they can't pray for you. That is the lie of the devil. That is dead meat from the pits of hell. Eagles eat fresh meat. Praise the Lord. And as soldiers of Christ, you must endure hardship. And the children of Zion are also ambassadors of Christ. So you don't hear the word for yourself alone. Matthew 5, 13 to 16 tells us that you are the salt of the earth. Amen? So if you are the salt of the earth, you are supposed to give flavor anywhere you are. And you are the light. So anywhere you are, you must be shining. Anywhere there is iniquity, there is darkness, you must outshine that darkness. So you are in the uni or you are in the school, anywhere you are. And people are committing iniquity. You should shine the light and say, no. This is not right. If not, you become what? A hidden lamp and not good for nothing salt. And what did the Bible say about the good for nothing salt? It shall be trodden under. Amen? So you are the salt of the earth. And you are the light. And the Lord expects you to shine. Praise the Lord. This year, this year, there are many blessings, many promises the Lord gave. I'll share with you what the Lord told me. You can tap into it if you want. Isaiah 60. The Lord told me expressly, he said, look, this year is going to be a year of darkness. He said, but as many as stand faithful, Obey my words. I will go to obedience now. Because obedience is one of the lifestyles of Zion. You have to obey. You have to be under authority. Authority at home, irrespective of what the government says. You have to obey and honor your parents. And everybody that is older than you, that is the lifestyle of Zion. In Zion... There's nothing like I'm South African, I'm Nigerian, I'm American, I'm British. We are talking about the lifestyle and culture of Zion. So in Zion, you honor your elders. The Bible says the elders that labor among you, they are worthy of double honor. I've seen some of you, the ministers that have left their homes, their family, their min- they will pass you and you walk them by. You don't know what grace means. I said it earlier. Some of you should hold on to their garment and say, what you have, sir, I need it. Just speak a word into my life. This is what people saw. You see, I don't know what you read in your Bible. Jesus was ministering. People were breaking the roof. Somebody was shouting, Jesus of Nazareth, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You don't know what grace means. You see a man. You see men seated. You think they just call them pastor. Think pastor talks. He doesn't know what he's doing before he brought people here. Because there's a grace of God on their lives. You can't buy it in Tesco or Walmart or whatever your shops are. Or shop right. They don't sell grace in shop right. They don't sell the anointing in shop right. It is the endowment of God. There are some things you don't understand. Even if God calls you, he 
he might not give you the grace he has given to Pastor Tooks. He might not give you the grace upon my life. Apostle Paul said to Timothy, because Timothy had been obedient and faithful to that apostle, he said, I will come unto you and impact some spiritual gifts. Some of you need to be impacted. Amen. Some of you, I don't know what you read. Do you study your Bible at all? Do you know for how long Joshua served Moses? Before he could receive the grace. Elisha served Elijah so much. And he said, my father, please, when you are going, you have to drop something. He said, when I, when, if you see me, go, just be focused. Continue doing what you are doing. Don't be distracted. Even Elijah was going. He did not, he did not drop the thing. He said, my father. Ah. Because it is at the father's discretion. Hear me. I don't have to pray for you. I don't have to. Show me in the Bible where it says I have to pray for you. But it says because I've received freely, I should give freely. If you understand grace, when you see, even if you don't know, they tell you that the grace of God is on that man. It is not because he's perfect. It is because God chose some people say, I'm a child of God too. Even in London, I've had many Christians say that. Because you are a child of God and the temple veil has torn. Does not mean God sees us the same. He knows why he put the fivefold ministry there. The fivefold ministry still stands. And in Ephesians 4, he said, he, he that ascended, he first descended. He took captivity captive. He said, he gave gifts unto men. And he gave unto some apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Right? For what? For the perfecting of the saints. So whether you are born again and you are speaking in tongues, you see visions, you dream dreams. Without the fivefold ministry, you cannot be made perfect. You can sit in your house and say, I don't even want to do I don't even want to go to those churches. Listen to me. I say it by the Spirit of the Lord, you will miss rapture. Because there is something in the fivefold ministry that is for you. You cannot build your house yourself. Even if you're a builder. You need a plumber. You need a carpenter. You need a painter. You need an electrical engineer. And you need an architect. So you can't sit in your house. and hey, I don't even know what they're saying. I can read my Bible myself. I can watch on TV. Apostle Paul knew why he said, I have to come to you to impact something. He didn't say, I have prayed, it will touch you. No. He said, I have to impact. Praise the Lord. And the reason he had to go to Timothy is because he's the one that sent Timothy where he was. So he said, don't leave that post. I have kept you. I will come there. Praise the Lord. We are still talking about the lifestyle of Zion. In Zion, obedience to God's word. And when you are under authority, you have to obey. Rebellion must not be found in Zion. Rebellion. God does not tolerate rebellion. Disobedience is not tolerated. And if you want to know, go and ask Mr. Gehazi. He was the man that was a servant of Elisha, Prophet Elisha. 
And the word servant is even used. No, who can, how many people can use that word? That day? He was a free born man. He was not a slave. But he chose to serve that man. Because of the grace of God upon that man. And everything that man said, he opposed. Hear me. Everything they say in the camp, if you know it does not go well in your spirit, carry your bag and go home. Or if you are in a church, instead of disobeying the instructions of your pastor, carry your bag and go home. Because you are fighting against grace. When you fight grace, you are fighting God. Because you don't understand what authority means. Authority is delegated power. Every man that is truly called of God, that stands behind the pulpit, as of the time he's standing, and when he's not standing, he's under instruction from God to do what he's doing. So God's power, he's backing what he's doing. He has authority that is delegated power of God. If you disobey him, you are disobeying God. And that was why in the camp of Israel, when they rebelled against the servant of God, Moses, despite the fact that it was, it was even Moses' sister, elder sister, Miriam, who carried him from the waters, and Aaron, they were both prophetess and prophets. The Bible confirmed. But the Lord did not talk about the Egyptian woman that they were accusing. He did not even put that one aside. You are challenging Moses. You are challenging me. Miriam, may you be leprous immediately. You be carried out of the camp. And the earth opened and 250 people were swallowed. Because they were disobedient to God's servant. Hear me. We are teaching you the lifestyle of Zion. The same God who is plenteous in mercy. The same God is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes. When you fall on the other side, you might say, oh, there is, we are in the dispensation of grace. The Bible says, because of grace, should we then continue in sin? Say, God forbid. Praise the Lord. I'm rounding up now. Mm. because this is a different mountain this is the Zion of God and you are meant to be eagles so we are telling you one of the major things in Zion is change hear me, change change you cannot go back the same way you came there must be change. That is what is lacking in Christianity today. Somebody has been in a church five years and something is not changing in you. That is not Zion. There must be transformation. There must be growth. There must be change. Your life must improve. Your academics must improve. Your business must improve. You must move higher. The glory of God must be seen in you. Something must be different about you. Because children of Zion are set apart. Yes. Yes. Go and find out. The Lord said, Israel is my firstborn. Till today, go and find out. The Jews are still the richest. You can say they are not born again. The gospel is still going back. Moses and Elijah are still going to come back to preach to the Jews. And they will be saved. Amen? Amen? They are still his firstborn. They are the richest today because God pronounced Bill Gates is a Jew. Roman Abramovich, he owns Chelsea, is a Jew. Warren Buffett is a Jew. These are the richest people in the world. They are Jews. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at the master himself. Luke 2, 52. The Lord Jesus himself, because he's the king of Zion, he has to show the example. The Bible says, Jesus. Can you, somebody find it for me? And Jesus increased in wisdom. 
Yes. And stature. And Hold on. Do you know what gave birth to that scripture? Can you read the, the scripture before, sir? Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth. Yes. And was subject to them. Yes. But his father kept all these things in our heart. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, do you know what led to that? The parents of the Lord Jesus were looking for him. And he said unto them, Don't you know I have to be in my father's house? Because it's the Lord Jesus. You have forgotten that he was 100% man and 100% God. There's a question mark behind that statement. As a parent, if your son tells you, say, ah, why are you at the football field? Say, ah, Daddy, don't you know I have to go and play? How would you see it? But look at the next statement. But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. No, continue. He said, and he grew, 20, 50, um, 52. He increased in wisdom and stature. And so you should increase in wisdom too. That's why Pastor Tox is correcting you too. Because the Lord Jesus too, the Holy Spirit told him, ah, that thing you said to your parents, you get as it be. So he increased. So if you read it and you catch it, so you see immediately that the Holy Spirit corrected it. He said he increased. And if you check the next line, it said, after that, he was subject to his parents' authority. <laughs> so you can come here and dance and say, praise the Lord. If your parents speak to you at home and you don't listen, then you are not a child of Zion. Yeah. You have to be subject to your parents' authority. They have to see a difference in you yeah. than the kids that are out there. Yeah. Your parents have to be saying, thank God for my child. Thank God for that church that you are going. Even if they are unbelievers. The way you behave will draw your parents to the Lord. I was saying to Pastor Dayo, I said in a few years, parents will pack their children's baggages and send them to this camp. Because they will see that the children that come here, there is a difference. They will say, these ones are wise. Praise the Lord. We are not being unnecessarily harsh. We are just telling you what the lifestyle in Zion is. And we are not telling you what we are not practicing. You hear Pastor Tokes telling you that he has fathers above him. They correct him too. He corrects me too. The Bible says anyone that is not under authority. He said you are a bastard. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Even in Zion, that is part of the lifestyle of Zion. Mentorship is part of the lifestyle in Zion. That's why I spoke about Paul and Timothy, Joshua and Moses, Elijah, Elisha. And you saw the one that disobeyed. He did not get the blessing. And that is one of the reasons why there's a problem in the kingdom of God today. People are asking, where is the power? The mantle is not being passed on. From who? From the Lord. Because there is no obedience. When there is disobedience, the mantle, like Gehazi, everything that his master said, he disobeyed. Even though he didn't tell his master, in his heart. His heart was not right. Therefore, when the master gave him the mantle, go and place it on the dead child. The child did not raise. That is the dynamics of power. He never worked. But the same mantle, the master himself used it, he worked. How come the mantle of Elijah worked in the hands of Elisha? Where Elisha stopped, where Elijah stopped, Elisha started. The last miracle prophet Elijah did was split Jordan. That was where Elisha started from. And if you look at his statement, he never said, I'm now the man of the hour. Where is my God? Say, so where is the Lord God of Elijah? He called him father. So if you have no father, like Pastor Tox was saying yesterday, our daddy says, where faith fails, covenant works. And I can tell you, Elisha was afraid 
That was his first miracle. So he needed the grace of his father. And he walked. Because God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that was why when we were praying earlier, I invoked the covenant of David upon you. And it will work. Praise the Lord. Lastly, talking about the eagles, this one I'm rounding up. Eagles love storm. Many of you run away, babe, nobody prays for trouble, but there is good in a trouble. Everybody believes that, you know, that is the thing out there. Problem is bad, right? Problems are bad. <laughs> Some problems are designed to take you to the next level. If you are in year two, if you don't pass, if you are in the university, you are in year two, you don't pass. You don't go to the next year. If you keep failing, you are not going anywhere. And that is what storms do. When storms come, it's because God wants to propel you to the next level. And because he has told you that he will never leave you nor forsake you, the eagle understands that principle. You see, when there is storm, the eagle does not stress itself. It just spreads its wings. And it allows the storm to take it higher. So when there is a storm, know that God is near. Hear me. Whenever there is a problem, know that God is near you. Open your eyes and begin to look for him. Like Elijah, when he was in trouble. And the Lord asked him, Elijah, where are you? He's the one that was supposed to be looking for God. But God started looking for him. He said, go on the mount. Because he belongs on the mount. Not in the cave. You belong on top. So the Lord told him, go back on top where you belong. You are the head. You are not the tail. Go back on top. And he went on top. They said the storm came. God was not in it. He was looking for God. But God was in the small, still voice. So in the days of storm, just look for God. You said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Lord, I'm waiting for your voice. What is the strategy? What should I do? He said, when you are weak, that is when he is strong. So just say, Lord, carry me. Lord, just carry me through this storm. It is when people are troubled. You know, when there's a storm, that is when people are troubled. But that's when you should relax. Because he said, even when you pass through fire. He didn't say, I will not allow you to pass through fire. He said, but when you pass through that fire, I'll be right beside you. It won't burn you. The waters will not overtake you. Amen. Amen. So those troubles that you have been facing, it will work together for your good. I want you to confess it. That every trouble I have passed through will work together for my good. This year, starting from now, it will work together for my good. It will propel me to the next level. It will promote me. That storm, that problem is the key. Is the storm that is taking me to the next level. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am going higher. I am going higher. I am going higher. Above every other bird. Above every other bird. Above every other bird. Above the chickens. Above the swallows. I belong on top. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's one more quality of the eagle I'll share with you. And every child of God must learn this. The eagle is very smart. When it has worked and labored and labored, it knows when to set itself apart. Even men of God suffer burnout. 
You might be strong in your body, but in your spirit, you might need a refilling. Amen? Amen. So the ego knows when to run the path. You know what? It, it removes all its wings. Pull all of them off. And it's patient until a new set grows. So those who believe that that ego, that ego that I saw, it was weak, it's going to die soon. They will see another ego. Praise the Lord. And that is why the Bible says, those that wait upon the Lord, they shall be like eagles. They will renew their strength. Let's read it. Let's go into the book of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. You might not know what he's talking about. But if you've gone through spiritual battles, if you've experienced battles, you see, in a boxing match, the man who wins round one has not won. The judges might score you round one that you have won, but you have not won nothing. You can even win round two. You can win round three. You can win round four. You can win round five. And we are going to round ten. And somebody will say, that guy has won. This guy has won nine rounds. In round ten, you might receive a deadly blow. Like Pastor Tooks was saying, a delayed blow might just come from one corner. And that guy will score a technical knockout. Praise the Lord. Because the ego has renewed its strength. Praise the Lord. I know our time is fast spent. But we need to know these things. So sometimes you have prayed and prayed and prayed. And it looks as if nothing is working. It might mean that you need additional grace. You might need somebody to join you in prayer. The Bible says pray for one another. And it also says you should agree with people in prayer. It said when two or three shall agree on a thing, it shall be established. One of the lifestyles of Zion is fellowshipping together. You are not an island. You have to fellowship together with people. Amen. He said, one shall chase a thousand. Two will chase ten thousand. You might not know, but sometimes, like antibiotics, demons might be used to your anointing. And you need an additional anointing. Because graces are different. Praise the Lord. Mm. And sometimes you might be down. You need somebody to pull you up. Praise the Lord. So we are reading from Isaiah quickly as we round up. Mm. Isaiah forty thirty one. It said, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Praise the Lord. So when you are weak, you know what to do. Set time aside. And even men of God, you can preach from January to what? But when it is time, you feel burnt out. You take time out. Praise the Lord. Zion is the camp of champions. Amen. And I read to you the, kind, kind, the type of soldiers we have in Zion. Amen. There were men that were walking and the earth was trembling. And that particular scripture we read was actually talking about when the Zion of God shall descend. And he spoke about the second coming of God. When the Zion of God will be established. The sons of God will have taken their place. And we will battle all the enemies of God. And the sons of God will go and take the territories that the enemies have stolen. 
upon this earth. Praise the Lord. In Zion, you have champions. And a champion is a person who dares to stand alone. A champion is a person who never follows the crowd. A champion sees things differently, speaks differently. A champion is like the eagles who flies higher than every other bird. A champion is that person who can see victory in the midst of challenges. A champion is that person who prepares well and ends well. A champion is that person who is ready to pay the price for victory. A champion is that person who is patient to wait for the most high. A champion is humble. A champion is meek. A champion is patient. A champion is a man of character. A champion is a man of good testimony. Praise the Lord. Mm. I will round up by telling you this. When they say somebody is successful or somebody is a champion, always know that the gold medal that they carry is not made in gold. Do you know what gold medals are made of? It is made of determination. It is made of sweat. It is made of prayer. People who win don't run the race alone. They don't run the race by their strength. They run the straight by the strength of the Almighty. So gold medals are made for people who are determined. Even in the midst of failure, you are seeing victory. 